Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to double your frame rate on your AMD Ryzen powered handheld gaming PC. This method will work with any AMD APU that uses RDNA 2 or RDNA 3 graphics. And right now I'm on my ROG Ally with the Z1 Extreme. I've got a 20 watt TDP set here. We've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p low settings, and you can see we're not quite there at that 60 mark. Of course, it's not completely horrible. It's still a playable experience, but I'd like to get a little more out of this APU. And since we've got that free sync display, it's actually pretty smooth, but we can get a lot more out of this using AMD's new fluid motion frames. Basically frame generation for these APUs and other Radeon GPUs. Now this isn't perfect, but it's gonna work for 99% of the people out there. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is something I've been testing out quite a bit. And with this video, it's really gonna explain how to do it on any handheld. But since I'm using the ROG Ally, there are a few steps that we'll need to take only on this device here. But basically what I'm gonna do here is show you how to go from a frame rate like this to a frame rate like this. Now we're using the same exact settings, still at 1080p, low settings, and I'm at a 20 watt TDP. If you check out my performance overlay on the left hand side, you can see everything that's going on. Now this is really awesome. Personally, I've been really enjoying using this. It's definitely not perfect and it will introduce some latency to your game. I don't recommend it if you're gonna be using your handheld for competitive online gameplay, but for a lot of single player games that I've been messing around with lately, this has really gave me a nice little performance bump across the board. And uh, hopefully it does get better in the future. But with this method here, using it right now on your Ryzen powered handheld, it'll give us the edge we need to kind of get those frame rates over that hump. A couple other things to note here when it comes to fluid motion frames. Like I mentioned, you do have to have the latest AMD driver and the latest adrenaline software. The game must be in full screen mode. It's not gonna work in windowed mode. V-Sync must be off in order for this to work. And overlays don't work with fluid motion. Even the built-in windows overlay, like trying to adjust the volume, will disable it quickly. As soon as it goes away, it'll come right back on. And at least at the time I'm making this video, the ROG Allies Armory Crate overlay does not work properly with fluid motion frames. So keep all of this in mind. But if you're ready to get this up and running, let's jump right into it. If you're on the ROG Ally, the first thing you need to do is move over to the official AMD driver. Right now, you're probably using the modified driver from ASUS. It will not work, at least at the time of making this video. Hopefully it's added in the future, but right now it's actually pretty easy to get the official driver. What we're gonna do here is open up a browser and head over to the AMD driver website. You can just type in AMD drivers. It'll bring you right here. Processor with graphics. AMD Ryzen processors. We're using a seven series basically with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. And what we're gonna do is just download one of these. I'm gonna go with the 7840U version, submit, and we wanna download the full package for Windows 11. So the auto detect and install will not work. You will need to get the full package, which is 707 megabytes. This will give us the driver and the new Adrenaline software. We're also gonna to need to extract this package and I would recommend using something like 7-Zip. We're gonna download the 64-bit version here. Now that we've got both of those downloaded, we're gonna to head to our downloads folder. We're just gonna go ahead and install 7-Zip. Very quick process. Now we need to extract that software we downloaded from AMD. We're gonna right click, show more options, 7-Zip, and we're gonna extract it. Now that we've got it extracted, it's in our downloads folder. We need to find our device manager, display adapters, Radeon graphics. We're gonna right click, update driver, browse my computer for drivers. Let me pick from a list of available drivers on my computer and we're gonna choose have disk. Choose browse. We're gonna to navigate to our downloads folder where we extracted the new software, WHQL AMD, packages, drivers, display, WT6A, and we're gonna choose this INF. We'll choose okay. Now it's gonna populate a list of all of the GPUs supported by that new driver software we downloaded. We wanna find the 780M. 
So we're going to scroll down here. And it is here. There's just a lot. AMD Radeon 780M. Yes. And keep in mind, after we install this driver, it's not a problem to go back to the official ASUS driver. You'll just need to download it from their website. And again, if you're on a different handheld, like let's say an iNeo device that has that 7840U, you've probably already got the correct driver installed. Just make sure it is up to date. We just kind of have to do this for the ROG Ally and the Legion Go because the CPU or the APU here is the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, but it is using the same exact GPU as the 7840U. Once we've got the new driver installed, we're gonna go ahead and close down our device manager. Now, in order to access the new version of the AMD Adrenaline software, we need to install it, but you may need to uninstall the old version first. And we can do this from Settings, Apps, Installed Apps, AMD Software. We wanna uninstall the smaller version. Now that's gone. We're gonna head back to our Downloads folder where we extracted the new software. Packages, Drivers, Display, WT6A, and right here we want to find the B401180 folder. Scroll down just a bit and you're going to see CCC2 install. This is the new compatible Adrenaline software. I'm just going to right click, run as administrator. It's gonna bring up a window. You can also show details. It'll automatically start that install for us. Once this is complete, we need to do one reboot. We'll close this down, reboot the Ally. Now that we've rebooted, we have access to the new software. We've got the new driver installed. We'll open it up and you can actually check for updates directly from here. I'll just do a quick setup. I'm gonna to go to default, start gaming. From here, you can now check for official updates, but there's one more thing we need to do from the software in order to get our AMD overlay working correctly. At least I had to do it. Remember, Afterburner does not detect those fluid motion frames or the frames generated. So we do have to use the AMD overlay in order to see those frames. So from the bell icon, performance metric setup required. We're gonna enable and it will ask you to restart again. But this allows that AMD overlay to work correctly now. Now we're ready to start using the fluid motion frames. I do recommend turning on the overlay, so we'll head to performance. From tracking, overlay, enable metrics overlay, and on screen you will not see the FPS unless you're playing a game. So I personally like choosing game detection for metrics overlay, but this is fully customizable. We can move back to tracking and we can enable our FPS, frame rate, average frame time, frame time, 99 percentile, latency, GPU. I've got basically everything here enabled except for graphics API, just so we can see everything. And one of the main things that we're going to get here when using fluid motion frames is our frame gen lag. Now, this is one of the reasons I mentioned not to use it with multiplayer games online. I've been doing it. Personally, I don't mind a little bit of latency and I know what I'm working with here. This is not a high-end super AAA gaming PC. We need to squeeze as much as we can out of these handhelds and this is gonna allow us to do it. And from home, gaming, and it'll automatically detect all of the games that I have installed. So we can actually set this up directly from here or we can do it while we're in game. Again, you will have to be in full screen mode and you cannot enable free sync for this to work. But I'll give you an example. Spider-Man Remastered. Right here under graphics, you're gonna see a lot of different AMD technologies, but the main thing we're looking for is AMD fluid motion frames. When we enable this, it will also enable Radeon anti-lag and we can start a game. Now, once this is enabled, if we start the game from a desktop or any other launcher, AMD is automatically gonna detect that you do have this enabled, so you don't need to launch it from here every time, but I'm gonna do it for this video. Okay, so here we are with the AMD metrics overlay. You'll see we've got our frame rate at the top. Frame gen lag. 
If this is stating NA or zero, then frame gen is not enabled. I'm gonna show you now that this does have to be in full screen mode. From settings, I'm gonna to go to windowed mode and keep an eye on the frame gen lag in the AMD metrics overlay. You can see it's now disabled. So we're not using frame gen and you do have to have VSync completely off. Full screen, VSync off. Now we're using fluid motion frames with Spider-Man Remastered. If you take a look at my FPS counter in the top left hand corner, we're up in the 90s. Even at the lowest of the low settings on this APU with no frame gen, we can't run this game at 90 FPS. But since this is inserting frames for us, we're actually seeing some good frame rates. But our frame gen lag is right there at 37 milliseconds. So this will introduce a little input lag, input latency. Now, if that's something you can't handle, if you can't handle up to around 100 milliseconds of input latency, then this technology might not be for you, but I know I need to squeeze as much as I can out of this at those lower wattages. And if you look, GPU power listed here is actually full TDP. We're at 20 watts on the ROG Ally running this game really well. I'm gonna disable it. If you've got a keyboard connected, which you probably don't with a handheld, you can press Alt and R or you can swipe up from the screen and get to the software from there. We're gonna disable it. And I'm also gonna disable anti-lag. Now I'll go back to the game. Same settings. We were up in the 90s. Now we're right there under 60. Now I'll tell you, with FreeSync on your handheld, it does make a world of difference. No screen tearing or anything like that. And even though this isn't running at 60, it's not too bad, but having that higher frame rate is definitely where it's at. So we're gonna re-enable fluid motion frames. And yeah, instead of right under 60, 57 FPS, we're up in the 80s and 90s. So we've definitely got a nice bump in performance with this game. And for a lot of the games that I've tested, I've actually had some really good luck. Now at the time of making this video, there is one that isn't working as well as I wanted it to. And that's Horizon Forbidden West. I'm just not seeing the kind of performance jump that I see on all of the other games that I've tested, but I'm sure it's due to the game being so new on PC. But yeah, this is really great. And uh, I really do enjoy using this on the ROG Ally and my other handhelds. It is kind of cheating, but when we're working with such a low powered unit in the first place, we definitely want to add as many technologies as we can to get the best frame rate and the best experience out of the game. So far, I think AMD's fluid motion frames on these iGPUs has been working really well. Definitely needs a little bit of work, but overall, it's something that I've personally been using quite a bit on all kinds of different handhelds. Right now, I've got the new 2024 GPD Win Mini, it's got that variable refresh rate, 120 hz display, and a Ryzen 7 8840U. Out of this 8840U, I'm not exactly sure if it's the RAM speed or not, but with fluid motion frames, I've been seeing better performance out of something like this than I did on the ROG Ally. And yeah, it'll work on any of these handhelds with RDNA 2 or RDNA 3 graphics. And I'm sure in the future, once they upgrade to RDNA 3 Plus, RDNA 4, whatever they're gonna call it, we'll get even better performance out of games like this. It's not for everybody, does introduce a little bit of lag, but for single player games, I haven't noticed anything too major. I'm not a competitive online multiplayer kind of player, and if I was, I probably wouldn't be using my ROG Ally to win some competitions. I'd have a machine that guarantees me the frame rates and the latency I need to win a competition like that. But for the everyday person, this can really help out with those frame rates. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you do end up trying fluid motion frames, let me know your results in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.